Okay, welcome to the last session of the day, which should be a bit, um, we, we make it very brief. And um, what I should add maybe to, to Rina's presentation is that um, uh, the organization of the competition, I mean, we are four editors, so we'll have four groups. Everyone has, has a name tag here, and it says group A, group, um, group J. J, group N. So um, that's one group of us. E. And we will just, after a short presentation, split in these groups and just discuss a little bit how you see things and what, what, you know, how we can kind of uh, organize the whole uh, process. Um, maybe now, I just John, just start, start with your um, presentation. Okay, that's a very short thing. Okay, thank you very much, Andreas. Um, yeah, um, my name is John Worth. Um, I'm uh, asked to be an editor because essentially I used to work teaching people how the European Union works. Now I write a blog about the European Union and I also work as a website designer. So I'm not a journalist, but I know about the EU and I know about tech. So hopefully if we put together what you know about writing together, some of the things that I can contribute about the EU, fingers crossed that's how it should work. Um, I'm going to try and set the record for today of making the shortest presentation, essentially. I've got three slides and there's a short point on each slide because I can't remember who said this, but essentially, basically, most people can remember only three things from a presentation. So here are three things that hopefully you might remember. Um, the first question I want you, to at, want you to think about over the course of the next four months is that, why should anyone trust you and your blog? Okay. Because it's a question I'm often asked when uh, I say to people that I write a blog about European affairs, well, why should anyone trust what you say? Yeah. Um, because there I am, I'm just an individual, I don't have a big media organization, the Financial Times or BBC or any other organization like that behind me. All I have is my degree of credibility as an individual. Now as time has gone on and the numbers of readers have gone up, then essentially that has shown that people keep on coming back and keep on reading and commenting. Um, so essentially, ask yourself that question, why should someone trust you or your blog? Yeah? and try to come up with some decent answers to that. You might have particular knowledge. Yeah? You might have knowledgeable people who can help you. You might have a reputable media organization that is behind you. Yeah? But think, if you were coming across this blog the first time ever, why would I trust that? Yeah? So keep on asking yourself that question. Okay. The second point I think is quite important is the blog should be personal, but that doesn't mean private. Okay. It is you writing, that is the difference, essentially, between writing a blog and a news report on a news website or in a, uh, in a newspaper. It's about you as individuals saying what you think or reporting on what you see. So blogs should be written in the first person with I. Yeah? It is you as a manifestation of what you stand for, what you are seeing online. As Mark Mardell said earlier on, that doesn't mean you have to write a blog about what you had for breakfast or what your kids were doing in school or something of that nature, yeah? But it's you and your take on things, okay? So keep it, keep it that way. Can your readers relate to you as the individual behind the blog, essentially? If they can, yeah, that's one of the first things which can start, in my mind, to lead to a successful blog. And the third one is link, link, and link again. Um, quite often, there are lots of blogs and bloggers who invest a lot of time writing very good analytical arguments. Yeah? But they kind of blog in a void. Essentially, they write their analysis and they don't form part of a wider community. One of the ways you can build up trust with, blogger, with other bloggers, get them coming to you, is by getting a number of different people writing blogs about the same issue. And if someone else knows something more than you do about a particular topic, then link to them. If you link to them, they will see in their incoming links that you, you had been reading what they were writing and you've built some sort of small trusting relationship, essentially. When someone comes to a blog, they want to know the answer to a question. They don't necessarily want the answer to the question that you're providing. Yeah? So if they need background information about the European Commission, link to the Wikipedia page about the European Commission. 
If you're talking about something in the news, link to the relevant stories on whatever news websites which, you, which, you, which, you should, um, which you're reading. So more links, the better. If I read something on a blog and it doesn't have any outgoing links, that either says, one, this blogger is too arrogant to, and thinks that they know it all, or two, they haven't done an adequate amount of research and, and, have, cited their, and have cited their references. Yeah? So uh, really, as many outgoing links as you can, and if you read people's blogs, put them in the blog role on your, on your blog. That, again, builds that kind of trusting relationship. So those are my three points. So essentially, in, in summary, why should, anyone, um, why should anyone trust you? Yeah, just go through the three again. Oops, if it'll go back. Doesn't want to go back. Oh, yeah. Why should anyone trust you and your blog? Make it personal and link, link, and link again. Right. Okay, just, just um, if you're talking about linking, it's of course, well, I'm, I mentioned that to a couple of people. Um, the Euroblogosphere, or the, what, what's it called, the Euroblogosphere? I don't know if it exists. We'll talk about that later. But the, the blogs that deal with EU politics, it's, it's a very small community still. So if you, so it's very easy to actually, um, um, you know, get a good overview very quickly. And if you post something, you know, fairly regular, you actually manage to get known, you know, in, in, in no time almost because it, it's really a, a niche at the moment, and this this whole project is also about um, you know getting more people in, into the scene and and trying to um, make it more important in the whole of the political blogosphere. So um, we already mentioned that earlier that we um, are very proud <laughs> that, <laughs> that we finally managed to, to launch this blogging portal. So I just want to kind of um, show you the basic functions of it, because that, that will be one of the main sources, or that can be one of your main sources to actually find other interesting blogs, um, propose new blogs for the blogging portal, and find interesting stories. Um, so it's, it's rather straightforward. On the, on the home, home page, you basically have the editor's choice, uh, which basically is the Two, three, four, five depends <laughs> how what, you know. Probably on a Monday you have better stories than on a Sunday, uh, but anyway, it's the five best blog posts of the day. So if you don't have much time, just make sure you read those five things, and you're basically covered. <laughs> for, I mean, at least for the day. Um, on on the left side, you you have a kind of um, categorization of of the issues that are at the moment covered. So, you know, see here at the moment, we, it's a lot about international issues, of course, U.S. presidential elections still looming, um, in a way, Israel, and, and uh, here are European elections. So you can basically click through the categories and you see what has been um, written by blogs on these particular issues in the last weeks, basically. Uh, if you go to the post tab here, you basically get a raw feed of all the all the posts um, that are around. Or maybe I should, should say before, when you once go to the... <laughs> it's yours. No, it's not. It's not mine. <laughs> the locust struck The locust struck again. <laughs> um, oh, maybe one basic thing I forgot to mention. When you come to the page, you can actually define the languages you are able to read. So on the, on the, on, on the, um, on the top right, you can click on the languages you know, and you only get blogs, posts in those languages. So the prob we have now still the problem that we have not yet covered all the languages in, in the database. So most of the blogs still in English and uh, French, basically. But we're working on that and we're hoping also, if you come across any interesting EU blog, just use the contribute button here and propose the blog and we include it and um, we have like uh, another language added. And then the... Next tab here is topics. That's very easy. It's just all the topics that have been um, mentioned by EU-focused blogs, member states, Europe, international issues, about Brussels, kind of EU enlargement parliament. It's changing all the time, so uh, it's a very dynamic page, really. And then on blogs, you basically see the whole list of uh, aggregated blogs, um, meaning um, every blog that is in the database and it gets kind of featured. So you can also check whether... Here, here, that's a really good thing if you want to... Uh, if you have a bit of time, maybe next weekend, take a, take an hour or two, just go go through the links, have a look what what's out there, uh, see what people are writing, um, dig a little bit through the through the blogs is quite an um, amusing thing as well. Um, 
Don't forget to sub subscribe to the ones that you really like. 